Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to a very special edition of Coco Sports. We just had an AW Full Gear watch party on Twitch Coco Sports. We are live on Twitch Coco Sports, archived on YouTube Coco Sports, and I am joined by Boom Boom. As always, we ask, win, loss, or tie what did you think of the pay-per-view youtube put it in the comments coco sports twitch put it in the chat boom boom i'll let you go first win loss or tie i'm gonna go win win all right overall huge fucking win um only one match was disappointing and it wasn't even that disappointing in a ring it was more just disappointing thing um, some people are saying top to Alex for HK 92 saying top 10 ever pay-per-view. Uh, Andy Paps is saying 10 out of 10. Uh, appreciate you all being here. And golden star Alex says big win for me. All right. Booms. Let's break this down. Give our opinions. Maybe give rate some matches. See how we do. Boom. Boom. What was the first match of the night? All right, we're going to go way back. We're going to go way back to the start here. Okay. Uh, we had a women's match in the buy-in. It was Nyla Rose teaming up with Jay Jamie Hayter to take on Thunder Rosa and Hakura Shida. Uh, Coco, I think this was a pretty standard tag match to kind of get the crowd you know, fired up and plus to promote the upcoming TDS uh, women's title tournament, uh, the next bracket. You know the next round of it. Excuse me. Uh, so I, I think it was, I think it was awesome. I think they're teasing like another feud between uh, Serena Deeb and her Kurashida because Deeb came out to distract her Kurashida. But uh, overall, the uh, Nyla tried to go for a bomb, uh, and then she went to the, she stumbled back into Shida and she jackknifed her for the pin, gets the win for her team, so the good guys win. Thunder Rose and her Kurashida, you know, take home the victory. I think this was a very inoffensive tag team match. It was, you know, just something to kind of put the ladies on the card, promote the next round of the TBS tournament, and, you know, give the good guys a win. So I enjoyed that match. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, too. Uh, I think it should have been on the main card, but not everyone can make it to the main card. Later uh -huh. on, I'll tell you the match that shouldn't have been on the main card. But overall, I thought it to be really impressive, and I want to see where these women go. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. They did push TBS and here's the thing. It's one of those things. If it's free on YouTube and it's on pay-per-view numbers wise, do you think more people watch the women's match than maybe the pay-per-view? I don't know. Uh, that's kind of interesting too. So maybe there is more eyeballs of being on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh, golden star Alex says, I watched the buy-in match. I enjoyed it. Thunder Rose is getting bigger and and bigger uh, pops by the week. Yeah, Thunder Rose is amazing. I think all the women in that match were amazing. And I guess the only thing I could say negatively was I wish it was on the pay-per-view, but who knows? Uh -huh. Maybe that's not a bad thing. All right, Booms. Next match, we're headed to the pay-per-view. All right, we go on to the pay-per-view here. And then so the first match out the gate is Darby Allen versus MJF. MJF comes out, standard intro. Darby Allen, we're pretty sure, murdered somebody in his intro. <laughs> sorry, I forgot I forgot about that intro. Okay, we, I did, we have to talk about it. I mean, we've got to. Okay, it's like, it's Darby driving this beat-up car that's, you know, spray-painted, you know, loser. Uh, and then he picks up, like, loser this, in Japan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. He picks up, like, this hitchhiker wearing, like, a paper MJF mask. And then he takes his car, goes through a fence, flips it upside down, then crawls out of it, lights a Molotov cocktail and throws it and like sets the car on fire. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure Darby Allen legitly just fucking murdered somebody. I don't know but, if my response should be fucking giggling, but it was so over the top. It was hilarious. And the thing is, I think the match was fucking amazing. AEW's future looks bright. They call them the pillars. I enjoyed it, um, everything about it. But that entrance, like, was so ridiculous. I, I started the pay per view off giggling, and I'm not saying it in a bad way. It's just like he's a murderer. He literally murdered someone. <laughs> His promo package. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, the entrance was memorable. We'll say that. We'll say that. 
Uh, okay, so they anyway yeah. they have the match here, and and what surprised me about this match was was just the amount of wrestling going on. I think I thought this was going to be like a fight, but the whole purpose of this was to for Darby Allen to keep his cool, not you know result to brawling, making mistakes. No, he legitly got out and wrestled. So they had some great stuff. It was some great chemistry out there. Uh, I think that tombstone on the apron made me cringe. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, there was a part where the Pinnacle tried to come out, but they were stopped by Sting. Uh, there was uh, that coffin drop to the outside. But anyway, uh, during the melee, there was a the ending came when MJF pulled out Darby Allen's skateboard and was daring Darby Allen, come on, smack me with it. He was trying to get him, you know, get him to give into the hate, give into the anger. So he get disqualified, but no, instead he handed it to the referee. And as the referee went to put it away, MJF put on his dynamite diamond ring that he hadn't hidden in his tights, hit him in the face with it, then did a side lock hate takedown for the one, two, three. And that's important because MJF had said in his promos that he was such a good wrestler, he could beat Darby Allen with a side lock takeover. And he did. So yeah. that was a great match. It it was a great wrestling match. I was surprised how much time they gave it. I know it's a pay per view and all, but mm-hmm. when you watch Dark and watch other products, sometimes it's just like, oh, the match is over. The match is over. They gave it plenty of time. Uh, they were trying their best. They were because I feel like they have. It reminds me of really young Okada, Tanahashi, Nakamura. They have to prove to the world it's their company. You know what I mean? And I feel like they went into there with that attitude. Um, the skateboard thing, it was a bit cheesy, but it fucking worked. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, Golden Star goes on to say MJF was doing his best. Uh, Emperor Papillon impression. Let the hate flow through you. Let the hate flow through you. Uh, Gold Star also goes on. Also, if you notice, as we go through the show, all four of the AW four pillars won tonight. I did not know that. Damn. Good booking. What, what you got there? It's weird. Um, it booms. I'm just going to go on a little sidetrack here, and we're going to go. Uh-huh. Um, except for Darby, but he was in that match against the pillar. It's weird that we've been watching AEW for maybe three months on Twitch. I only see one booking mistake and I understand why they did it. It's a lot different uh-huh. than a lot of products out there. And we're not just picking on WWE. Gato. Gato. <laughs> Report to my office. All right, booms. Uh, overall, I thought great opening match. Uh, you said in Twitch, I want to, I want to clarify this on the YouTubes. You said this was your match of the night. Yeah, this was my match of the night. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I mean, it had a lot of good wrestling, had some hard hits right there. Nightmare uh, is now hosting my stream of drama. with four viewers. I, you know, they even though MJF won, I don't feel like Darby looks stupid. You know, it just looks like you know the smarmy heel finally came up with a way to you know to pull one off behind the referee's back, and it didn't. And I don't think our, uh, Darby Allen really lost anything. So, you know, it's not like he got beat straight up and tapped out. I mean, he just got sucker punched with a foreign object. And, you know, the bad guy was good at hiding it from the referee. And, you know, he didn't give in. You know, he kept his, he still kept his pride. Nice. I just want to give a shout out while you were talking. We got a uh, raid from Nightmare in New York. He was also doing AEW, does sports, Nightmare in New York. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll give you a shout out after we're done uh, our YouTube video. We're trying to do Twitch and YouTube combination. But, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out smoothly. But Nightmare, what did you give it? Win, loss, or tie? Um, and what was your match of the night? All right, so thank you. Uh, Golden Star says, I agree with Boom Boom. The main event was the best moment, but the opener I felt was the best bell to bell. Really? I feel like I'm the I feel like I'm the uh, one out. I, I give it to the main event. Main event. But I don't know. That's the thing. Top to bottom, man. It was a great fucking pay-per-view. That's why we're giving it a win. Nightmare New York, I love you, brother. And uh, tell me if you thought it was a win, loss, or tie. All right, Booms, your match of the night, opening match. Wow. And Golden Stars, Golden Stars with you, dude. All right. But I think there's a couple matches you could say, oh, that was a ma- match of the night. It was right. It was a good night. It was a good night of pro wrestling. That's what we can say. 
Um, Golden Star says, is a great Evan a discussion on which the best match of the night because the show was just that good. I agree. It feels, it feels great to do that. And we haven't been that way. Maybe honestly, new Japan a few years ago. So it does feel great to do it. All right. Uh, booms next match. Next, we had the AEW World Tag Team title match. Uh, the defending champions, the Lucha Brothers, taking on FTR with Tully Blanchard. Uh, uh, this match right here was pretty hard hitting. Uh, they tried, uh, FTR tried to isolate uh, Pentagon, uh, started beating him down, trying to get the uh, hot tag on his brother uh, Phoenix. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of Lucha Libre spots. I particularly liked the one about the the brain buster on Phoenix and got the two count. Uh, they, there was a little bit of shenanigans there. Um, when FTR goes to the outside, I think it was Dax was the legal man, but it was, um, cash that put on, they both for some reason put on their Lucha Libre mask, uh, during the court, you know, under the ring during the match. And then, uh, Penta and Phoenix, they spiked them on the mat. They got the one, two, three. Uh, they win the match, but uh, they take off. Uh, I think it was Cash's mask. I was like, see, he was the illegal guy. So I th don't think this match is over, or this feud, excuse me, is over. Because now FTR has something. Ha they have an argument now for rematch. It's like, well, you know, we, yeah, we put on the mask and it backfired against us. But bottom line was the illegal man was the one who was pinned. So I think this feud is going to continue, but hey, let it, because, you know, we're going to see more frog splashes, we're going to see more Three Amigos, we're going to see some more uh, Lucha Libre, we're going to see some more uh, cutting off the ring by FTR, so yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, and to me, it, it was a great match, it was a great tag team match, I like the fact that tonight they didn't have back-to-back, -back. there's just well-round booking. And I mentioned this during a Twitch stream. Uh -huh. If you have a singles match, then you go tag. If you got a tag, you never have the back-to-back -back same type of match. And they didn't. They did a really good job with that tonight. Um, I thought they were teasing a shit, let's just reverse it. And I love the fact that, you know, the AAA tag titles are on FTR. They have the AEW titles. They're going to go between two different countries and feud. Um, and I love the fact that with the mask, there's an excuse but they didn't restart it, you know, granted that Chris Jericho moment that I keep complaining about, but I'm glad they didn't restart it. Um, but yeah, overall, um, very enjoyable match, a very, very enjoyable match. <coughs> and they went all out. And the thing is too, it's two different styles of pro wrestling, but I think they're both showing that they're adaptive. Like these are two tag teams that were pigeonholed by a lot of people. Like, you're Lucha High Flying, you're Technical, you're this. But they're showing they're more than what they're told they are, and in a good way, you know what I mean? So, uh -huh. overall, I, I thought that match was amazing, and I'm glad the feud is continuing. And we were worried about if FTR lost, that they would just be lost in a shuffle, but they found a way to solve that problem. Um, Golden Star Alex says, fuck the revival. I wonder how... Much Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard talk to FTR about their matches. It's probably a dream for them. Ah, oh, definitely, man. It would just be like, you know, whatever you dream to be, you just got to sit down and talk. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you want to be a Twitch streamer? Here's like the best Twitch streamer there is. Or someone you look up to. Even if it's something from the past. Like, I want to be a sports guy. Okay, well, here's Jim Rome. Here's Dan Patrick to give, you know. It's got to be a great experience, definitely. All right, Booms, anything to add, or you want to go to the next match, sir? Uh, well, let's go to the next match here. We had the finals of the uh, AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament. You had Miro versus Brian Danielson. Now, one thing I've noticed here is, like, Brian Danielson's, like, a totally different wrestler. It's, like, a totally different guy. I mean, if he would have put on a hood or something, I, you know, we called him El Goat or something, I would have almost believed it was a different guy because he's wrestling a totally different style. And I guess Brian Danielson really loves to play rough because this was just a hard hitting match. Uh, if you go back and check this out, I mean, there was like a spot where he did a running knee to the outside on Miro. Uh, there was one where he did a, uh, was delivering a series of kicks to the head. Miro uh, fired back with a power bomb. 
uh, they did a spot where uh, he went through game over, managed to get to the uh, ropes. Uh, he did a did another spot where he transitioned from like a submission into like a knee bar. That wasn't enough. Uh, they were just going in, they, playing rough. Anyway, uh, Danielson threw some elbow strikes. He hit a, a DDT, went to a guillotine choke, and then Miro went out. Referee stopped the match. So Brian Danielson won via referee stoppage. And now uh, Brian Danielson's now the new number one contender. Yeah, yeah. And um, what, one thing is, uh, the Amer- it's great to have the American Dragon back. It's great to see him out there, Miro. And if I could just nip something in the bud, there is a myth between wrestling fans. They're usually the type of guys that tweet, can't we like everything? I want to put a fucking stop to the myth. These are two men that were freed and they get to do whatever they want and put on great fucking matches. People like the ring doesn't matter. The company doesn't matter. Nakamura and AJ Styles disagree. And now... Miro and the American Dragon disagree. The ring and the company and the vision matter. And I, I think I think uh too many times, you know, there's a community that why can't we just all get along? That you're fucking lying to yourself. This is a myth that is debunked over and over and over again. Can we stop saying it? I enjoyed this match beyond belief, and I'm so happy for both these guys. And Daniel Bryan wins, so it's going to be amazing. Now, and here's the thing, too. I feel in the chat, and I feel when we're watching this live, people let Daniel Bryan win that match. I think people started going, ooh, Kenny Omega has a real shot winning because the storyline pa- pointed to Paige. You know what I mean? So, overall, I thought it was fucking amazing. Uh, Golden Star says, one thing I loved about Brian Danson at AEW is that if you noticed, he's won all his matches with different moves and submission holds. It keeps his matches unpredictable in a good way. Yeah. Also, I wonder what Miro is going to say to his God now that he's lost. His promos are fucking on point. Uh, I'm so glad too. Like the thing is Miro and AEW was a complete fucking failure until he turned it around. I like the fact that this company will be like, this isn't working. Let's get something on track. Guilty. I did that when I thought in my head when Dragon won. Yeah. So overall, I'm super happy. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, American Dragon's back, boys. American Dragon's back, and it feels good. It feels fucking beyond amazing. Booms, anything to add or next match, brother? No, nah, let's go to the next match here. We had a trios match. We had the Young Bucks and Adam Cole, the Super Click taking on the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage in a false count anywhere match. Now, if you were looking for some technical wrestling somewhere in the vein of Lucha Bros versus FTR, you need to keep looking because this was just crazy. It went off the rails a little bit late in the match. They started out in the ring, but they went out. They just went out all over the arena. It got a little ridiculous at points, but it, it, was, it was fun. Um, Super Click donning just obscenely bright neon pink. Uh, you had the good guys donning tattered jeans and boots. Um, they, uh, Blucha, uh, excuse me, uh, Jungle Boy whipping out some Lucha Libre early on, doing some twists and turns. Uh, they hang on, something just happened. I'm hearing myself for some reason. Now I'm okay, now I'm good. Um, Sorry, I was hearing no myself. But it just interrupted I, 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 my, wait, while, uh, you get, while you get back on track, I just want to say I mm-hmm. am a big fan of teams wearing the same color. Them wearing all pink is pretty fucking amazing. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just a big fan of that. And Boom Boom, after doing five stars or better, could kind of agree with that when he had to do a 10 on 10 match. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So there was this brutal spot where Adam Cole got put. He did got a Huracarana from Jungle Boy through the, through the table. Uh, There was another spot where Matt Jackson did a diving elbow on a luchasaurus on a table. There was one where Christian dove off the balcony uh, out there in the audience and did like three members of uh, the elite. Uh, They did the sick one, six spot where Cole whipped out some thumbtacks. They showed them in Jungle Boy's mouth and the uh, Young Bucks just 
why he had him in a camel clutch just kicked him right in the mouth uh there was a sick spot where adam cole got bounced off a ladder uh they went eventually went up to the ramp uh there was a panama sunrise hit uh they couldn't get they had a spots where they just couldn't get the advantage they whipped out a uh, thumbtack covered knee pads hit a bte trigger on luchasaurus Luchasaurus would come back with a shooting star pressed to the outside off the ramp. Uh, there was a spot where Jungle Boy was locked on was locked on the um, the snare trap, and it looked like it was about to finish. No, that got interrupted, and then eventually it was all alone. Christian goes for a concerto on I think it was Nick. No, then I was Matt Jackson, and then. Jungle Boy said, no, 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 let me, he hits it with the concerto, turns him over, one, two, three, good guys win. Yeah. Um, I A lot of the chat and a lot of the Twitch audience was really pumped up for this, and I wasn't, but as it was going on, I was really voting for the super click. Um, I didn't know I was going to be that much invested in it, and it was one of those, I wasn't that pumped up for the match, but as the match went on, I really, really enjoyed it. And there was times towards the end of the match where it was fucking wackiness in a good way. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go. Let me just read to the chat real quick. Golden star. Alex is super click baby. This match was pure craziness and I loved it. And again, second of the pillars winning jungle boy, getting it, uh, a pin on Matt Jackson. Uh, Seahawks two forty seven says, dude, we have a new AEW champ spoiler. And did the earners circle win? I believe so. I actually forget, but we'll get to it later. And we'll probably do college football after we do this YouTube video. Golden Star also goes on to say, I still feel sorry for Boom Boom for he had to, <laughs> had to work look so hard at that 10 women's all Japan match that nobody knew anything about. Yeah, that was a rough one, Boom Boom. Give yourself a Barry Horowitz and Raptor Man. Come on. Are you letting spam go through? Come on. You're supposed to be guarding me. You're supposed to be protecting me. I'm doing a YouTube video here. You got my back. See you all. Get ready for some college football. All right. Uh, as far as the match goes, exciting, fun. And the Cochero, whatever the fuck it's called, I apologize, was a bit slow, but it was telling a story. But prior to that, dude, shit was wild. Uh -huh. And Raptor Man's older fucking brother, the goddamn dinosaur dude. I apologize, can't think of his name right now. Fucking flying through the air. Yeah, Luchasaurus. How fucking amazing was that? Thank you, Golden Star Luchasaurus, and thank you, Boom Boom. Luchasaurus had a fucking bad, and maybe it's just because he's so fucking huge. I don't know about you. Luchasaurus is so big and so athletic. I felt fucking 10 times out of shape watching that match. Like, well, it's because you are. I uh, am, yeah, dude. But wow, that motherfucker. He can go. Luchasaurus. Yeah, he did a shooting star press out off a fucking ramp. It was amazing. Golden Star, thank you for the assist. All right, Booms. Next match. Next match is, I'm not going to say it was the worst match of the night because it wasn't. But it, it's, it's the tag match. It was Cody Rhodes and Pac teaming up to take on Andrade El Idolo and Malachi Black. This was not a bad match. It, to me, Coco, it would be like, if I could compare it to anything, it would be like somebody just hand you a hot dog with mustard and ketchup. It's on its own. It's not bad. It's not the worst <laughs> thing ever. But you feel like, okay, you need a little bit more on there. You know, you need something. You need some sauerkraut. You need some relish. You need... You know, you need onions. You just need something else on there. And I just, for me, I, again, it wasn't bad. The whole idea was where these, could Cody and Pac coexist, even though I don't think they're in a blood feud. However, I kind of saw some friction between Andrade El Idolo and Malachi Black, which makes no sense because it was Malachi Black who went out there to go help out andrade uh, it was um uh there was a spot where it looked like uh malachi hit like the black mass on cody when he was not the legal man not it looked like he about knocked him out and so Pac had to go out on his own and the story was can Pac hold his own until cody recovers he did a springboard moonsault onto the bad guys on the outside uh andrade did a corkscrew plancha to the outside there was some great stuff some good technical stuff some high flying 
Uh, there's a good DDT on the apron of the ring, which I'm contractually obligated to mention is the hardest part of the ring. There's a reverse uh, superplex, inverted su superplex from the top rope. Um, there was a spot where Cody wrapped Andrade in a figure four and then it allowed Pac to hit a 450 on him, which was a pretty cool looking spot. It uh, looks like things were starting to break down. And then, uh, let me see, can we go forward here? I think, we, oh yeah, there was a uh, Pac went, sent Andrade into the corner, then hit a poison rod on Andrade, then went to the top, hit the black arrow, got the one, two, three, so Pac and Cody went, Cody Rhodes win via pinfall. I want to give a shout out. HBK drop a 25 biddies. Biddies are better than titties. Um, Speak for yourself. I think the biddies are better than titties. I think for, uh, for a fact that this should have been the pre-show match. There was nothing wrong with it, but golden star says I could sum up this match in one word filler. I uh -huh. just feel like, like it was a great match. No one cared about. And the story didn't make sense. No, it just felt like there's four great athletes and they had to get them on the card. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think this and the women's match should have swapped, in my opinion. I really you know, do. I, I said, you know, during the pay-per-view that, you know, it, had this been on Dynamite, I think it would have been fine there. But it felt just, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just felt out of place. Well, on and the one compliment we give AEW is that they don't do pay-per-views every month. It's basically every two months, give or take a couple of days. But it's basically every two months. And they build up. Every match feels important. Every match feels that. And then you have these four guys that are just there. It just seems out of place for AEW. And, yeah, I don't know. Maybe in the future this is going somewhere. But I just feel like this wasn't that. This wasn't a pay-per-view match. In ring-wise... Talent wise, it was fun. It just no one cared. Um, Golden Star Alex says, I don't like ketchup. Just give me a hot dog with mustard. Disgusting. <coughs> ketchup for life. Uh, once again, thank you for the biddies. Hangman Page, new champ. Uh, let's see. Cowboy shit. And Twitch biddies are better than Dave's man titties. I think we can all agree on that. I, I think titty, titties are better. I mean, biddies are better than titties, but. There you go. Also, I wonder if Cody is just being stubborn with the booze, or is he planning to turn at some point? Um, outside of this match, I believe AEW is doing a great job booking. I think he's feeling it out. I think he's feeling it out, and we talked about this on uh, on the stream. I think he's going to be a more serious NXT Bo Dallas, and what I mean by that is, I think he's going to think he's a face, but the rest of the world isn't. And he's going to handle the John Cena type comparisons better. Or he's just going to turn out heel. But I think him turning into a serious Bo Dallas is the way we need to go. You know? Uh, Booms, your thoughts on uh, Golden Star. We talked about this a little bit on stream, but I want to just get it archived on YouTube. Uh, Cody's just Is Cody just being stubborn with the booze? Or is there a plan to turn him at some point, sir? I think he's just being stubborn. I think he feels like he can honestly pull, turn the crowd back around to his favor. I think maybe he's trying a little too hard, but that, that's the way it is. All right. All right. So we'll find out in three months who's right, who's wrong. And hopefully, hopefully if you got, cause like the thing is, if it doesn't click to be Bo Dallas or it doesn't click to turn the booze to cheers, it's going to be uh -huh. a fucking disaster. You know what I mean? They're flirting with a disaster here. So, uh, girl with top, it says, I really hope it's a slow burn heel turn. All right. That's not bad. Not bad. So I wouldn't mind, but I, I'd like it where he's a heel, but he doesn't realize he's a heel. Uh, Marvel's been flirting with that writing lately and I like it, but yeah, it's a possibility. Um, yeah. I mean, eventually he's just like, I had enough. Yeah, I tried my best. Um, all right, Booms, next match. Next match was the AEW Women's Championship match. It was the champion Britt Baker defending against Ty Conti. And Ty Conti came to play, man. She came out uh, face paint wrapped in the Brazilian flag. Uh, Britt Baker had an, had an entrance. One of the um, members of Fozzie was playing guitar on her intro. 
Uh, this started out pretty, you know, I, I think this was Ty Conti's best match of her AEW career. I mean, she was giving it to the champion. I mean, there was a spot where she was just going around, just giving just these devastating leg kicks. Uh, the doctor would battle back, uh, you know, you know, stopping uh, Ty Conti's momentum. She did another, this cool neck breaker. Uh, again, a lot of kicks by the champion. There was one where they did a, um, I guess, an air raid crash on the apron to the outside. That, that um, was that, amazing. Oh, yeah. That one made me, cr- oof. I was like, God, that had to hurt. There was a spot where Ty hit like a gotch style pile driver and damn near beat uh, Britt Baker, but the doctor fired back, hitting multiple curb stomps on Ty Conte, particularly one to the outside of the, you know, on the steel steps, bringing her inside, hit her again. Uh, but Ty wasn't done. First, she had to do a moonsault to take out uh, Reba and Jamie Hayter on the outside. They got into a one on one situation. They kept doing uh, some multiple uh, near fall attempts. There was, uh, Attempts at a uh, lock job, but uh, Ty Conti tried to reverse it in the ring. But however, um, Baker countered, rolled through it, and she got the she got the roll up one two three and got a pin. So, man, this was an overall gr- this was just a great match. And again, uh, the loser in this match, Ty Conti, didn't look stupid. You know, she didn't tap out. She Thank God they didn't do like a roll-up or outside interference. It just looks like she just got out-wrestled for three seconds. It's all it looks like, you know. And so she doesn't look bad, so she's going to have to climb the ladder all over again. But I, I think after tonight, she's a bigger star than what she was going in. No, no, no. And, and, and I definitely agree with that. And I think, Ty, like prior to this push, they were she was just a generic diva now she has character she has something that is her she has something that's original she had a great match um andy paps during the live chat complained about the roll-up but i think the roll-up in this scenario even though i hate women's matches and in roll-up is better than the submission I think if it was the submission, it would have looked bad at this point. Yeah, she would have looked horrible if she would have tapped out. Yeah. And this one, and plus, it wasn't like a schoolgirl roll-up like they have been doing. It was just they were jockeying back and forth. They reversed out of the lock jaw to a pin, and then she, the breaker just reversed the reversal. And yeah. got it, and just got a pin. And so it looked like the ba- it looked like Baker just barely escaped that match by the skin of her teeth. I know that, but she had a lot of advantage, so it, it should be really interesting. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a couple comments here, but I'm gonna reread Top Hat's comment because there's a part two. Uh-huh. Uh, it's about Cody Rhodes. I really hope it's a slow burn heel turn. She goes on. That is the story. I hope they are telling. Uh, I just. I think for the first time in a while, they're flirting uh-huh. with disaster, and we also remember Cody, uh, Brand Brandy have messed up storylines before. So I hope that they're telling a great story. The thing is. Most of the time, AEW is hitting home runs, but we do remember Brandy. We do remember a couple of Cody stories that have failed. Uh, Golden Star going on about this match. Britt Brit Baker's entrance put me in heaven. I'm a sucker for a live performance at wrestling entrance. Yeah, that was really badass. I really like, I really, she's, dude, both these women are coming along such a great thing. Hopefully, Tay keeps improving and gets good enough to get a shot at the belt. She has a, uh, she has the fan support. She just needs to improve on her in-ring work. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think she's doing pretty good. And the fact that you know stuff about her. She's a martial artist. She's, like, too many times you, you see someone and they're the Randy Orton of women. They're just plain and fucking boring ass motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Uh So I'm glad we're knowing something about her. At least as a fan for me, I feel that's important. You know, uh, girl, what topic goes on by that? I mean, I hope they are doing the heel who doesn't know they are heel story. Yeah, that would be, that would be nice. That would be fantastic. Um, and I hope, I hope they hit it. I hit they, I hope they hit it. All right. Booms. Uh, I was really impressed with this match and, I feel like for the longest time, the biggest critique on AEW has been the women's division. But with the with the you know opening match, the pre-show match, and this match, I think they're getting it together. And I think 
character wise and ring wise they're different you know uh-huh. it's not uh-huh. just you know dmd beats random beautiful woman we're not even sure if she can wrestle you know what i mean they're they're getting they're getting it together it's it's not the pace they wanted the women's division but it it's a it has a bright future for the first time in a while it's coming together yeah yeah all right booms next match sir next match we had i guess i'll call it a grudge match here eddie kingston versus cm punk uh eddie kingston comes out fist taped cm punk comes out uh old school tights with the chicago with the chicago flag on it uh match really doesn't even start uh kingston hits that spinning back fist damn near knocks out punk that looked amazing, and that kind of right? that wow. kind of set the tone for the match these two just kept flipping each other off and they just started beating the living bejesus out of each other there was one part where punk goes to the outside got busted open kingston just wiped you know, Punk's blood all over his face and then just started punching the hell out of him. Uh, these two were battered and bruised. They started at one point exchanging fists just right in the middle of the ring, broke down to a brawl, kicks to the face. Uh, Punk was eating it up. It was going, I mean, for bell to bell, it was a hell of a fight. Uh, there was a part where Kingston took a, a GTS but managed to barely get out of that there was a a point where kingston he was going to go for a move he missed punk hits an elbow to kingston's head uh hits kingston with another go to sleep gets the one two three uh matches over punk wants to help up uh kingston shake his hand but kingston bails so this feed may not be over but hard hitting match just really really brutal so if you like hard hitting stuff, you want to see a hoss fight, yeah, check this match out. Yeah, yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, the big thing I want to say about it is I think you know uh, Top Hat doing a stream pulled up uh, Eddie Eddie's record. Um, I think he has to win one of these feuds. He can talk himself into great feuds. I think he has to win a big match. Mm-hmm. I I didn't think he had a winning record, but he has a winning record. A lot of it's tag team matches. A lot of it's dark. It's a lot of that. But I think maybe Lance Archer is his biggest victory when I was looking down the list. And I I just think he could talk his way into the building. I love CM Punk. He's not 100%. He's not he, CM Punk is not 100%, but he's he's being booked well. It's doing I love the match. I I thought I thought I thought Kingston should have won this match tonight. I really do. Um, I hope whoever Kingston talks his way into next match, he wins. You know, I mm-hmm. I want to see him win a big big match i know that but like yeah i don't know i love cm punk and i love this match as part of me i just wish eddie kingston kept fighting um but yeah so there you go um i'm gonna go read some comments real quick uh cm punk mm-hmm. this is from golden star alex cm punk was also getting loud booze towards the end so if it continues i'm wondering if they'll lead, it will lead to anything we all know punk prefers being a heel so that'd be a good chance to create a great feud for hangman that's true that's true um do we like hangman as champ i believe so how do you book hangman versus danielson uh it's, you don't really have to work that hard man it's just talented dudes alex <laughs> like here's the thing you don't have to work that hard if the athletes are amazing if you can go in the ring you don't have to work that hard the story writes itself um booms next match Next match, we had the Minneapolis Street Fight. We had the Inner Circle versus uh, America's Top Team in the Men of the Year. This was just straight-up cheese. We're talking Velveeta levels of cheese. Uh, This, uh, let's see here. Uh, It started out as Santana and Ortiz working over Scorpio Sky. Uh, This, uh, there was a lot of spots here. It, It broke down eventually into a street fight. Uh, trash cans, kendo sticks, uh, table spots. Uh, there was one cool spot where Santana Ortiz had the uh, men in a year like a double submission. It was like this rocking horse slash Boston crab slash camel clutch combination. And then uh, Sammy Guevara spiked a football off of uh, Scorpio Sky's bare chest. I don't know. I just thought, got a kick out of that. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah, bad guys would you know score some big hits. There was a big square off between junior i think it was junior del santos and uh, no it was andrea orlowski and uh jake hager 
there was a big table spot when Sammy Guevara went to the outside, just did like this huge swanton dive off a ladder. Uh, I watched it twice. Ooh, it just, it makes me cringe. Uh, there was a spot where all ego, uh, Ethan Page got mouthy with a fan by ringside and going up taking the iron claw from Baron Von Raschke. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, I, that, you know, that was okay, before yeah, my I, time, but that was amazing. I'll give you, I, I'll give you that. That that spot was, uh, that that was entertaining just for the nostalgia pop right there. Uh, Lambert, uh, eventually it came down to uh, Dan Lambert and Chris Jericho. Uh, Jericho cracks Junior Del Santos a few times to make sure that he didn't come in and interfere. He pulled out a stapler. Uh, Lambert guarded up high, but he went low. Uh, he did a tribute to Eddie Guerrero with a little bit of a shimmy, did a frog splash, did a one, two, three. Um, the inner circle gets the win. I think this match went a little too long for my taste. I think maybe if they could have shortened it by five minutes, I think it would have been a little bit better, but it was just one of those. It was all over the place. The use of uh, plunder around the ring and trash cans, because they were saying they were hitting them with objects that were invented in Minnesota. So they had like a, a bunt cake pan, uh, a toaster, they had a hockey stick, a water ski, uh, it was it, it it was crazy. It was it was crazy to say the least. But I think it kind of wore out its welcome, in my opinion. It yeah, wasn't it was a bad match. Long. I think it would have been better if it hadn't run as long as it did. Yeah, um, it was de- it was definitely cheesy. It was the match that I was least looking forward to. I lo- I described it going into it. It's everything I love, but it being horrible. It's like I love MMA. <laughs> I love Chris Jericho. I love pro wrestling. You combine it, it's like, uh, what is this? Um, it was a lot better than I thought. It was crazy levels of cheese. Um, it was enjoyable. Could have been shorter. I thought the finish move where he spiked the football when they were all locking each other up was kind of interesting. But uh, overall, uh, not bad. And it was a great place. It was like, you know, it, it gave us a rest before the main event. Mm-hmm. So uh, Alex says, good luck. Hey, appreciate it, Alex. HK92. Um no, I'm sorry, Alex says I still prefer cheddar cheese. I'm an American cheese guy, you know. American cheese, pow pow pow. Uh, also, I love Jericho doing the frog splash for finish, and I love you, Eddie. Rest in peace. He lost, he lost him too soon. Yeah, Eddie Guerrero is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Uh, he passed away so many years ago. I apologize. I don't have it on the top of my head. I know there's a lot of references to him tonight, so it was really good. Uh, Eddie Guerrero is one of the best in the world. And they referenced him a lot. A lot of wrestlers did, and it it was it was it was pretty amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Real tight spot said it was 16 years ago today. Man, I'm old. Man, he, he was such a great wrestler. It don't feel like 16 years, does it? No, younger fans go back and watch him. He he had it all. He had it all. Uh, Golden Star Alex. Also, this isn't gonna happen. But let me dream. I wouldn't mind if Paige and Vent decided to give wrestling thing a shot and sign with AEW. She looks. She's nice to be very nice to look at. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of attractive women. I'll always pop for the toaster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we found out a lot of stuff was made in uh Minneapolis. I had no idea. The bunch of inventing bastards. They made up the pop up toaster. Yeah, Sammy off the ladder was great. That's true. Sammy was doing amazing. And uh, 60 years ago today. Thank you, real tight spot. Uh, yeah. yeah, so overall, um, really good cheese at a really good spot that I wasn't that pumped up for, but enjoyed. And we learned a lot about uh, Minneapolis. So yeah, yeah, interesting interesting note about Minneapolis. That's the city I got engaged in. All right, we got a new follower. Pop, not so. Woo-hoo. Welcome to the Internet Infantry. I'm a loser in Japan. I stream sports games and watch parties every day after work with a dinosaur named Raptor Man. Give the stream two weeks. If you don't like it in two weeks, I'll be bad enough to say give us two more weeks. Also, check us out on YouTube Coco Plays and YouTube Coco Sports. You see, he, he says pop, not soda, but he's wrong on both. It's actually called a Coke. Really? So you got Coke, pop. Soda. I, yes. I, 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 I always called it soda, but you know, I, I was, I wasn't much into the fight. You know, the pineapple pizza, the ketchup or mustard on a hot dog. That, that's a battle I'll die on. But like pop soda, I don't care as long as you go. 
soda. <laughs> it's, I don't. I think pop's more of a South thing, right? I don't know. No, no, call it pop? no. In the up and running area, I believe they say soda, like in Minnesota and that area, they say soda. And I think up around your neck of the woods, or probably a little bit further out west, actually, they'll call it like pop. But down here, down south, everything's a Coke. Got it. Because there oh. have been times, okay, true story, when I was a kid, my dad would be like, okay, I'm going by the store. Anybody want a Coke? Yeah, what kind? Uh, Give me a Dr. Pepper. And that, mm. and if you're not from the south, that makes no sense to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, so uh, it is pop. So I guess in Canada, it's pop. I didn't know that. Uh, I heard people say pop. Uh, pop is a Northeastern Canadian thing. See, I grew up in New Jersey and I visit New York and, uh, Philadelphia. And I, I heard my whole life. I heard it was called soda. And then in the Marine Corps, I heard pop and Coke. And I just didn't know where, like, cause you know, in the Marines, you meet people from all around the world or at least all of, I guess all around the world. And then, yeah, like, here's the thing. Quick question, you know, a little break. We're talking cheese. What do you call a pizza? I say, give me two pies. And people down south were like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? You want apple pie? It's like, no, I want two pizza pies. And I'm like, dude, they're not pies. So you're from the south. I'm from the northeast and traveled around a lot. Do you call them pies? No, we just call it pizza. Yeah. Pop, not soda. <laughs> thank you for getting us off topic. But thank you for being part of the internet inventory. Uh, so, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, maybe right, up in Maine. We're, we're, we have getting, to ask two we're getting derailed here, but there is something we need to mention before we go to the uh, oh, main event big. here. They brought out a surprise. Jay Lethal came out and announced he is now all elite. And he is put it out, and he knows that uh, Sammy Guevara has an open challenge out for the uh, TNT Championship. So he said, okay, I'd like to take him up on that. Sammy comes out, and he accepts. So this Wednesday on Dynamite, we're going to see uh, Jay Lethal versus Sammy Guevara and uh, Coco. <laughs> I was wondering uh, if or who um, AEW would take advantage of with Ring of Honor being the situation they're in. Uh, getting Jay Lethal, good, good move, bad move, lateral move. Anybody else coming? Fantastic move on many levels. Um, a, we didn't have many surprises. This was the surprise. B. Everyone's like, oh, who's the WWE guy that's going to show up? And then have Ring of Honor in the biggest name. Um, I am friends of a friend of Jay Lethal, Eric Cooper. I met him a bunch, and he's a super nice guy, and he runs wrestling schools and wrestling shows down in the Florida area where I used to run. And he just seems like a great guy, so I'm hu huge happy for him. Um, and I'm glad it was a Ring of Honor guy, a Ring of Honor star. There'll probably be more. But and all that, but it, he fits what they're doing. That's what we need. We need less Hardys, more fit what you're doing. Um, I I am super happy for this, and it was a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Um, probably more Ring of Honor guys. Probably. Uh, the, I think the Briscoes need to be on a bigger stage. I, I really do. And here's the worst part, dude. I went to Ring of Honor, and they were they had a sale because you know they're not going out of business. And I looked at the t-shirts and I'm like, dude, I don't even know who these motherfuckers are. Who are these bastards? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know who these people are. So uh, I'm happy Jay Lethal's there. I like to see the Briscoes just because I think the Briscoes are a really good tag team. And I don't think outside of ROH and Indie Heads that the world knows. You know, I'd like to see them on a bigger stage. Uh, but yeah, this was huge and it was a smart move. It was a good move and perfect timing. Um, I'm going to read some comments. Boom, boom. We'll go to the main event, which I'm a little nervous, mm -hmm. scared. Uh, I call it pizza pie when I'm ordering a, a whole thing, not just a couple slices. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Golden star pizza pie slices. We got it. I popped huge for Jay. What lethal? Nice. Uh, why do I get the feeling that pizza pie is a New York, New Jersey area thing? It might be. It might be. I, I, cause I remember I went to, I went down South to North Carolina and there's a pizza drive through, which I never seen before. I was like, all right, whatever, dude, you got to fucking drive through. This is the nineties. I'm sure there's pizza drive throughs everywhere. And I, I, I went and I was like, yeah, I'd like a pizza pie. And everyone in the car was like, you know, I was a fucking infantry sniper, you know, it's good old boy club. Oh, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? They don't sell no fucking pie. Yeah, dude, I want a cheese pie. Hey, why the fuck would you get a cheese pie? Like, and it went forever. And it went so bad that like the group of uh, Southern gentlemen 
<laughs> like, even asked. Be like, yo, Domino's. You ever hear some motherfucker call it a pie? I don't know why these Southern guys are talking with a Jersey accent. But still, you get the point. I was embarrassed. <laughs> Well, some people might be upset uh, the former Bray Wyatt didn't show up to me. Jay Lethal made up for it. I love that guy. I agree. And I thought we, we'll talk about uh, Bray Wyatt after this because I think there was a time where he could have showed up. Boobs. Maybe we should have led with the main event considering we're also doing this live. But let's break down the main event and then we'll talk about the possibility right. of Bray Wyatt. Main event, we've got Hangman Adam Page challenging Kenny Omega for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, this one was rather personal. I think great storytelling. These two started with a stare down, a lot of, a lot of trash talking. Uh, this, it picked up. There was a lot of kicks, a lot of V triggers. Uh, Don Callis tried to interject multiple times early on attacking, uh, Hangman Page. Uh, Page would counter. He would go back and take things to the outside uh, Omega would return the favor by doing his trademark Terminator dive to the outside, that somersault. Uh, there was one spot where Hangman Page did a moonsault to the outside on Omega. They hit that table. The table, I think they were supposed to break, but it didn't. Uh, fall away slam from the top, uh, Avalanche. Uh, Page avoided a, um, a Snapdragon suplex, managed to hit a, uh, Larry or a lariat than a power bomb. He was going to the outside, and uh, he was going for the uh, for the for the buckshot lariat, but uh, Omega pulled the referee in front of him. This created a little bit of chaos. You had uh, Don Callis get involved. He wanted up getting clocked for his troubles. Uh, there was a part where Omega tried to put. Uh, Page and like the one winged angel, he escaped. Cowboy tried the hangman, tried one of his own that didn't work. Uh, he eventually there was one big spot where he got hit. Aubrey Edwards came in, you know, had to come in, referee the match. Uh, these two battled uh, back and forth. Eventually, hangman managed to get the upper hand. Uh, he hit the buckshot lariat to the back of Omega's head. Had the young bucks come out. It looked like they were about to get involved, but they never laid a hand on Paige. They never tried to do anything. Uh, Paige hits the buckshot Larry, gets the cover, gets the pin, gets the win. You know, blood-soaked uh, Adam Paige uh, wins. Uh, it's it, The crowd goes insane. Um the Dark Order comes out to congratulate him. They hand him a beer. He throws the beer down. There's a big hug in the middle of the ring. Uh, they lift 10 and uh, Stu Grayson lift up Adam Page. And then we fade to black. Uh, I think a great ending. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll start off with one negative thing. The Young mm -hmm. Bucks looking up at uh, looking up at Page like they're fucking Ibushi or something. That was bullshit. Uh -huh. That was bullshit. Uh, everything else absolutely fantastic absolutely fucking beautiful i fucking loved it and we talked about bray wyatt earlier we're burying we're burying the lead by putting it in the main event but i thought like there was a part of me w when they were celebrating is this when bray wyatt comes out or do they let him have their moment it's been a long time coming they let him have their moment and i still thought it was a huge win for the pay-per-view uh, i'm gonna re i'm gonna read some comments here boom booms and then we'll get our final thoughts all right sir uh, Golden Star Alex says the main event, uh, sorry, the main event had me super nervous in the best way. I love both Hangman and Omega and I popped big when Hangman won. Dave and I joked about a lot about long-term booking, rightfully so, because most people think some stories and matches are long-term booking and they're not. This was Hangman is a great example of how to do long-term uh, booking properly. I agree with that. Also the nods by the young bucks to Hangman tell their own story, either a, Hangman being accepted back into the elite, or maybe Omega being kicked out. He does need to take some time off to heal nagging injuries. Omega does. Or I mean, the or the Bucks returning face. I think they tried to recreate something special from Japan for North America. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was the Netflix version of the Golden Lovers. You know, <laughs> so yeah. 
Uh, girl with top hat. Back to pizza. The use of word pie with pizza is solely in the U.S. specific regions at that. The full phrase is more common in older generations. Oh, great. <laughs> of Italians and Americans. I did grow up with a bunch of Italians. Now the term pie is used more on its own as slang for pizza. As in, I'll take two pies to go. Even in the U.S., there's different usage. I looked up that, and that's what I found. Nice. Maybe maybe it's an Italian Northeast thing. I don't know. That's why, like, I kid you not, what I notice as a, as a voice actor and someone who acts like an idiot with their voice, I can't do a fucking voice or do a voice acting read without doing this. I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I'm Italian because I was passed around a lot as a kid, but I do know that, like, if I'm like, oh, yeah, like, if I have to change my voice, all of a sudden I fucking get the power of Italy. <laughs> Maybe I'm Italian, boys. I don't know what I am. Maybe I'm Italian. I mean, I change my voice. I do one of those. I call it pizza pie. I hang out with a bunch of Italians in New Jersey. Uh, all right. Cowboy shit. HBK. Love you, brother. My final thoughts are that it was, the show was great. I think I liked All Out more, but this show overall was awesome. They really fucking brought the thunder, boys. I feel like Top Hat's the type of person to ruin discussion by actually looking up facts to prove everyone wrong. <laughs> I looked up because I was curious. All right. Play nice, chat. Play nice. I am. Guys, I'm searching to find out what I am. I'm maybe French, maybe Canadian, maybe Irish, Italian. I don't know. I don't know, Booms. What are you, Booms? Do you know your fucking history? Yeah, I've got a little bit. Um, English on one side. I've got Scotch, Irish, and uh, Cherokee on the other. Yeah, I think as time goes on now, we're just becoming mix of everything. Because like, I remember back when I was a kid, it was like, I'm Italian! That's it. Now it's like, what are you? Like, I'm Italian. This, but also they have the technology. You have fucking internet. You can search mm -hmm. shit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a boy that doesn't know what his heritage is, but I do know if I change my voice, <laughs> the hand turns Italian. <laughs> I'm Hispanic. My parents came from Central America. Nice. All right. I think that's it. Overall, huge win. YouTube. Do you have anything to say before we we leave YouTube? No, no, I agree. It's a it's a huge win. Good big night for AEW. Uh, Adam Page finally wins the big one. I'd like to see how they promote and book uh, Adam Page as the champion. I'm, now I'm interested to see the how they do the build up and when and where they do the match with uh, Brian Danielson. Do they go ahead and do it this weekend on Dynamite, or do they wait? Or do they wait to the? I hope they don't wait to the next pay per view. It's a couple more months away. But uh, so there's that. Um, you know, where does Kenny Omega go from here? How, how does he recover? Uh, what do they do? Do they answer the questions with the Young Bucks? What's going on with them? Uh, what does the Dark Order do? Uh, who's the next challenger for the Women's Championship? Uh, is FTR and the Lucha Brothers done? Are they going to go to another match? Uh, are they... Is Cody Rhodes going to turn this ship around? Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of... and Oh, yeah. Plus, you got to look at the build and the and the follow through they're doing with the TBS women's tournament. There's a lot of things going on here. So I'm very interested. I think they did their job tonight. Everything looks amazing. I, I still think all out was a little bit better, but that's not to say that full gear was bad. I just felt like all out was a little bit better, but great match. It was entertaining. If you're a wrestling fan, if you love AEW, I would definitely check it out. If you're just a casual wrestling fan and you want to introduce somebody to AEW, I think this is a show that you could show them and you wouldn't be embarrassed with. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. So, yeah. Overall, big win. Now, hear me out. I'm just going to fantasy book here. Top hats in the same scenario. Um, Omega takes a little time off, not because of injuries, because he goes to Wrestle Kingdom. Boy can dream. A boy can dream. All right. Uh, guys. Twitch, stay right there. We're about to play some video games, most likely college football, then hockey. Maybe a little bit of golf later on. Uh, YouTube, we do watch parties all the time on uh, Twitch Coco Sports. We also play sports games, and you can watch it, Coco Plays. All right, so YouTube, a like, comment, subscribe. Twitch, you stay right there. And with that, just YouTube. I am over. Ba -na 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 -na. Hey, ba -da -ba -ba -ba.